All right, so welcome to the special edition of the Sinformers podcast where we will be talking about our Clash charity event that's coming up in a couple days. That's right, our charity preview event. It's a pre-show. Yes. It's like free-for-all. You know how WWE used to do the free-for-all on the, what was it, TV Got channel? I don't remember. Consider us the Sunday night heat to your charity pay-per-view. I'm Todd Pettengill. <laughs> I want to be Todd Pettengill. Okay, you're Todd Pettengill. Yes! And I'm uh, Kevin Kelly. <laughs> Clearly won on that. Yeah. You did, yeah. So uh, basically, we wanted to do a podcast that kind of explained what exactly the clash is all about. Uh, because I get numerous emails wondering how this is this is all going to happen. It really is hard to explain in such a short notice when, especially when we're trying to go up to different vendors, the prizes and whatnot. It's hard to just say exactly what it is. It's one of those ones you need some time to fully explain how we do it, and it all works out. So that's what we're here to do today is to give you a little history of our last charity event, as well as explain how it all works and give you some information regarding the one coming later on this week. Exactly. So basically, uh, a couple years ago, I noticed there was a trend of people doing live stream video game marathons for a charity called Child's Play, Mm -hmm. which is a marathon where people raise money so kids that are less fortunate can kind of have some fun games and kind of experience the same kind of Christmas birthday event that normal kids feel. You know, like kids... It, like, there's charity events that help kids get food and help right, them get right. shelter and stuff, but there's no, like, fun charity event, you know. So there was a lot of video game sites that started working with this Child's Play charity where kids would get games and stuff like that, and the money raised would be to provide them with entertaining things. So there's charities for all kinds of things. Uh, so my friend Phil did a video game marathon on his site, shamoozle.com, which was a, uh, a very successful uh, holiday game marathon. It was a couple of years back, and it was for Child's Play, and they did really well. And I thought it was great, and I, I participated in it. I was uh, I played some games on the air, and they did a NES challenge, like the NES, um, uh, what's it called, NES World Championships. That's right. Yeah, so they did that live on the air with a, rep- uh, a repro cart. So I thought it was a great idea, and I thought about it for a couple of years. I thought we could do a, an N64 wrestling marathon, which I still have been kicking oh, around that, I- that idea. Um, but I figured I would, I would dip my toe in. Last year, for around Christmas time, for the uh, Clash for the Kids, my wife used to intern for the Ronald McDonald House back in college, and it was kind of her idea. She wanted to do something to give back because we're the kind of people where every year we we want to do something, even if it's you know giving five dollars to Salvation Army, just something every year to give back. And it was her idea to do something for the Ronald McDonald House. So basically, her idea and my idea kind of clashed, if you will, <laughs> to coin a phrase. And uh, Clash for the Kids was born. It was so. almost like a perfect synergy of your ideas. <laughs> it was a, a, a synergy when they clash. Cheap plugs all around. Everybody gets a gets everybody a, gets a plug. We give back to everybody. <laughs> so uh, when the Clash for the Kids came around, uh, I came up with the idea because uh, Scott Pilgrim I was starting to get really into, and the Clash of Demon Head. Right. You know, and I, th- I love the font. I actually stole the Clash of Demon Head font for the Clash for the Kids and the colors and everything. The same red, same white. Uh, if you look at uh, Scott Pilgrim when they're in the record store, you know how it shows like the Clash of Demon Heads album, like their cardboard cutout real right. quick? Yeah. It's the exact same thing as the Clash for the Kids. <laughs> it's the same red, it's the same white, and it's the same font, everything. And I thought I thought it was uh, a great ring idea. To it. Yeah, it had a good ring to it. I thought uh, since we we're going to be playing a lot of side scrollers, I thought it was a good name to call it the Clash because it was a lot of fighting. And uh, we thought we would start with the Scott Pilgrim game to kind of pay homage to the Clash for the Kids that game. logo, <laughs> that game. which we'll get we'll come back yeah, to. <laughs> so I called you know Victor and told him I have this great idea, twenty four hour video game marathon, and of course he came up with. You sure 24 hours? Is, <laughs> when you want to just yeah. do 12? Well, we were shooting back and forth 12 <laughs> yeah. or 24. 12 or 24. For 24 all, for pretty much like a week beforehand. Yeah. So uh, we finally decided 24 hours. We, we picked a weekend where everybody would be free, and we kind of did the same thing for this one too. And we decided, oh, let's, let's go for it. So I looked into how we would go about streaming everything, and uh, I found this hardware called a Roxio Game Capture. Uh, it's this thing that you hook up to either any HD system, so an Xbox 360, a PS3, a Wii, uh, you know, I think there's even a GameCube if you have the HD uh, component cables, which are really rare, by the way, which I didn't find out, but the Wii's GameCube compatible anyway, so 
It doesn't matter. But a PS2 could even be streamed on the Roxio Game Capture because it has HD functionality. Anyway, that's all technical stuff. So for the uh, Roxio Game Capture, it'll capture what's going on on the TV. So I found this program called uh, Livestream Procaster, which will take whatever you're broadcasting on your desktop and also split it into a webcam if you want to do both at the same time. It's kind of like when you're watching The Daily Show or uh, Weekend Update, how they have the reporter in the full screen and then the small That's square right. in the corner of uh, you know what they're talking about. So what would happen would be is on the full screen would be the game. This is my, my big idea. Was The full screen would be the game, and in the corner would be us real small because no one really wants to look at us anyway. Um, so I, f- I found... I had to figure out how I would do that. So I hooked up the hardware and bought a HD webcam and invested some, you know, pretty decent money in a nice webcam so it would stream smoothly throughout it. And uh, figured, what the hell, let's try it. So I tested it a couple weeks leading up to the event, and it seemed to be working great. And Clash for the Kids went out and figured we'd do it. And it actually went pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. What was our final total? Uh, it was around seven hundred dollars. It was it was actually seven hundred dollars on the dot. So uh, Clash for the Kids was great. Uh, Ronald McDonald House loved it. They sent us a thank you letter. Um, they thanked us as uh, Syn- Synergy uh, S- Comics. <laughs> yeah, <all> right. <laughs> Which is you know it's close enough. But I mean they were happy and they they sent us a letter saying you know uh, you paid for you know someone's birthday party and stuff like that awesome. that we helped pay for and. You know, everybody who sponsored, we went around and uh, the weeks leading up to the Clash for the Kids, we thought to help encourage donations, we would get prizes. And we never really had any experience getting no. prizes from companies before. Shameless pandering. It's, it it's, was really tough. It still is. It's still tough <laughs> getting, getting prizes from sponsors. Uh, we had authentic letters, you know, official letters from the Ron McDonald House that they sent us to give to these companies. And even still, uh, I, had, I had called this local video game store. Oh, uh, here we go, yeah. I called this local video game store, and the guy, as soon as I said it was the Ronald McDonald house, he, uh, you really find out a lot about people when you ask them for stuff. Uh, it's crazy. The guy thought that I was, like, from McDonald's, and the guy went off on this rant about how much he hates Ronald McDonald and how he uh, poisons kids and all this stuff. And, I, like, I don't think he knows what the Ronald McDonald house does. I think he just associates Ronald McDonald with Satan. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's a, it's an easy job, but one could only assume. Sure, yeah. I mean, clown. If you ever seen the movie It, it's you know. So you you really find out a lot about people when you go to ask for prizes. <laughs> now I but, have Tim Curry's laugh in my head. Now, thanks. By the way. <laughs> sure, yeah, no problem. I hate that laugh. Yeah, uh, but this time I think it's going a lot better now that we did one. Right. Because uh, th- th- what was hard the first time was the fact that we were just you know very small local podcast, not even a year old. Just being like, hey, you, we're doing this thing. You want to donate? Now, you know, the show's over a year old. We have the previous charity events. We have people. Be like, yeah, we have hey, connections. We raised seven hundred dollars from McDonald House back in December. You know, we donated more to charity than Jay Z and Kanye did. So, <laughs> That's true. We did. <laughs> I know, right? Google it, everybody. Exactly. Uh, so we made a lot of connections from the last one. Like when we were going around for prizes, I actually uh, sent a fax and an email to Applebee's restaurants, and they said, "No problem. We'll send you whatever you want." And they sent us a bunch of gift cards last year, and they're doing it again this year. Yeah, cool. And we we made uh, connections with them. Uh, Adventureland Comic Book Store said they'd do whatever. Uh, Next Level Video Games has been tremendous support. It's it's a lot of. Oh, they're fantastic. A lot of local people like come together to help this whole thing. Because I think they recognize that. You know, it's a lot of the local indie businesses, and they recognize we're just kind of like a local independent thing ourselves. Yeah. And they pretty much, it's like a brotherhood that you know you have to help someone else out while they're struggling to get up, to get to right. get known, because they're doing the same thing. Because in all honesty, they're basically giving us a prize, and they're going to get 24 hours of promotion. Yeah. And it's it's around the clock promotion. That, we're, we're, we're hyping them now. We've been hyping these yeah, people for weeks. For weeks. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's a, it's there's no lo- losing at all, and they have tax numbers, so they can write it off. Oh yeah, that's so true. but but you still get these people that just don't understand. So that's another reason why we're doing this podcast. So maybe people will understand in the right. future. Um, even the 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 one we're the company we're doing for this one didn't really understand. I had to explain it, and I made a commercial explaining it, and I just think that. We should just lay it out right here. So that's exactly. basically why we're, we're making so, this podcast. So, without further ado, the rules of the charity event, Clash for the Canines, coming to you live August 18th 
from SynergyComic.com. Yep. 18th and 19th from noon to noon. Uh, we're going 24 hours again. Maggard. And we have unfinished business because <laughs> anyone who watched Mr. Pilgrim. anyone who watched the first couple hours of the Clash for the Kids will realize that uh, Scott Pilgrim literally the first couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> we played Scott Pilgrim and we made it all the way to the end. Friggin' game, man! And we 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 had someone who wanted to jump in, so right. we we quit out the game at the very last level so they could join in. And when we quit out. Everybody went back to level zero except for Scott, you. who was me, player one. And we had to try and beat Gideon while everybody else was level zero, and I was, like, really leveled up. And it was just impossible. So this time, there's no there's no exiting out. There's no there's no going back. No. We are going straight from Matthew Patel all the way to Gideon. We're not stopping. We're not quitting. No one's jumping in or out. No, we're, we're beating Scott Pilgrim. That's, yes. a, that's a promise. Mm-hmm. And uh, if anybody wants to wager any uh, donations, we can do that, you know. But uh, Scott Pilgrim... That is the number one thing we are going to tackle as far as our games go. Yeah. The Clash of the Kids kind of helped us realize, like, the kind of games we wanted to tackle and what order and stuff. So Scott Pilgrim's definitely number one for <laughs> Clash of the Canines. And we're going to start things off on the schedule this year, starting uh, on the 18th at noon with Scott Pilgrim, followed up by our other side-scroller beat-em-ups like X-Men Arcade, The Simpsons Arcade... Uh, we're probably going to throw in a lot more. Like, I think Streets of Rage is going to lead perfectly into our retro game challenge because it's, it's a retro game and it's it's both. Yeah. So from noon to five, we plan on doing the brawl for all. But I mean, these are open ended times. This is just kind of what you can kind of expect. It'll be one or you know, it'll, they'll, they'll be going. We're going to try and stick to the schedule as best we can. Yeah. But who knows? If, if we, we get game re- quickly, we might get tired of a certain or if genre. We get requests from people. We'll, exactly. We're, we're going to honor everyone's requests. As we long will as have a chat here. board open for the public. So by all means, communicate with us. We'll have someone on the computer at all times. Yep. Keeping up with you. And uh, after the brawl for all at 5 p.m., we're going to the retro games. We're going to be playing some NES, some Super Nintendo, Genesis, and 64 games on the uh, Wii. We downloaded a bunch, and I also have the uh, Genesis collection for Xbox 360, where we can play some. Uh, Genesis Classics, we're, we're going to be representing Sega and NES. So Genesis does, Nintendo don't, but in this case, they're both going to be doing, right? Is that I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, when Genesis came out, their promotion was Genesis does, Nintendo don't. That was their catchphrase. Okay. <laughs> after the classic Whatever. games, after the classic games, we're going to be bringing back uh, an old favorite from a, December. A favorite from the Clash for... <laughs> the Clash unexpected the kids, favorite. Which is crazy because everybody loved NFL Blitz. This stupid little game that is... It was literally $2 for PlayStation. <laughs> God, like, And oh. it went off. People loved it. And everybody here was just... It was like had like 14 years old, man. Yeah. I was playing with uh, Chris Carter on the Vikings and... Elway and Marino. I know, there. right? <laughs> Everybody. Like, it is the great. It is a great roster. I mean, the clash for the kids ended with the Blitz Super Bowl, and it was the Broncos versus the Cowboys, Aikman versus Elway, and that's how we ended the clash for the kids. And it was a nail biter. Went down to <laughs> overtime, and I lost. <laughs> but we're also going to be having some other sports games during this, like Tecmo Bowl, Mario Tennis, oh, man. Uh, Mario Tennis. Yeah. Now, do the wrestling games count in this block? I guess, but nobody really has any of the wrestling games anymore. Do you still I mean, I still have for GameCube, I have WrestleMania 19, which is just a ridiculous game. I don't, it's the one that has like all those weirdo levels you can fight in like a parking lot and play as Goldberg and spear someone in the traffic and stuff. Oh my god. It's, it's a terrible game, but it's fun. Um, <laughs> from, and then after the sports games, we were probably going to try and bring back music at midnight at yes, some point. Yes, definitely. We yeah. have to do that. We're going to play rock band, but we're going to leave the drums at home because they were kind of overpowering. I remember at the last one trying to... Yeah. I was up here trying to level everything out. Right. Trying to make everything... I mean, I uh, did pick up a new drum kit, but it does... I mean, I get it. Because last year we just had the pads on the table and that was just terrible. Yeah. So I think we're just going to do guitars and singing. Works which, for me. Which works yeah. for everybody. No one really likes playing the drums anyway. No. To be honest. No. And uh, so we're going to have music at midnight... So not only are we going to have Rock Band this year, but we also have Parappa the Rapper <laughs> because it's perfect because this is a charity event for, you know, canines, dogs. and You're really stretching it there. It's a rapping dog. Parappa's going to be our mascot. Sure. Yeah, he's a great <laughs> mascot. He's got to believe. He always does. Yep. Uh, and then uh, there's going to be a Twilight Zone period after yeah. that. Where, but this time I think we should plot Last it out. year, last December, between the hours of, <clears throat> we're going to say, 3 and 6, 3 and 7, we don't remember what no. we played. And we were drinking coffee the whole we time. We were in such a caffeine-tired, delusion haze. 
<laughs> and no one was around. Sean Marlon left. Cause he's like, I'm, I'm going go s- to I'm gonna go sleep with my girlfriend in my own comfy bed. Yep. And then Champion. your wife left. So I'm going to sleep by myself in my comfy bed. Uh-huh. And it was just you and I on the couch staring at the TV screen. Yep. I know we were playing something. Uh, my question was, I wonder if anybody was even in the chat room or watching from I 3 to 7. I don't recall. I don't even know. We could have fallen asleep and nobody would have noticed. It's probably like the ring or white noise or something. Like, if you were watching the feed during that time, creepy stuff happened. I'm sure, yeah. Someone crawled out of the television at some <laughs> point. That's all I know. Uh, so, whenever we snap out of our Twilight Zone infested haze at uh, 6 a.m. Uh, is Mario in the Morning. Mario Morning. Where I have like four Mario Karts and Super Mario 3 and, you know, Smash Brothers again. Right. You know, whatever Mario games we decide to play will right. be played. And hopefully Sean Marlin will be around by the time that comes on. Yeah, well, he said he wants to be here, so. All and right. then from uh, 10 a.m. to noon, to wrap it up, we're still thinking about what we're going to do, but uh, if enough people want to see Blitz again, yeah, maybe might we'll finish do another up a Blitz, Blitz Super Bowl. Might have you know? a morning concert with Rock Band and then finish up a Blitz. Who knows? Yeah. It might be. The, it's going to be the All Request Final Hour of Power. That's yeah. right. Final Countdown. Yes. Uh, is that on Rock Band? Because we should totally... I Okay. I don't think it's on the Rock Band Sean has, but I do have Lego Rock Band. Oh, and it's on it is right? on that. Oh, that's awesome. So that works. Yeah, we can do that. I'll bring that over also. <laughs> That'll work. Uh... <laughs> And if you uh, scroll down, you can see the list of prizes that we have for this year's event. Yes. Now, before we get into the prizes, though, let's explain how to get said prizes. This is the part that seems to confuse a lot of people, and this is the part we mainly wanted to touch on before we head into the podcast. Yeah, later we, cha- the we changed it from the last time. Change episode. things forever. That's right. Because initially, it was just you donate five bucks, we throw your name in, and if you throw in at least five bucks, we would throw your name into a hat to potentially win a prize. But we had a lot of big money contributors last year, and it's already starting off with a bang with people that are donating some big money this year as well. The rules have changed slightly. For now, it before it was just if you uh, donated at least five dollars, your name would be thrown in. Now it is for every five dollars you donate, your name will be entered in for a prize. That's right. If your name is drawn for a prize, then of course you would not be able to win another one later on. Mm-hmm. But you'd have multiple chances to win over the course of the night. That's right. And additionally, if you donate fifty dollars, uh, lucky people will have a, a signed comic coming their way, coming from you. Sir. That's right. Yep. Yes. The uh, the title of the, the website. Pretty much where the name of the podcast comes from. Synergy Comic issue number one from our own John still will be signed and delivered. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Yep. If we're going to keep going. In metallic things. silver. Ah. And if you live close enough, maybe I'll come over and hand deliver it myself. In costume. That's right. For free. You don't have to win any charity auctions to win me for a couple minutes. <laughs> what the? You just have so to. So yeah, if you donate 50 bucks, you're guaranteed to at least get a comic. Yep. But if you, but that's also going to give you 10 chances to win one of our other prizes that we have in store for us. And we have some good prizes this year. Yeah, we really do. Uh, we got the... Uh, Tell them what we have for them. Uh, Applebee's came back to us, and they sent us a $25 gift card with free appetizer and free dessert coupon. Nice. That's right. Uh, you should probably talk right, about this right. next prize. I did go to the Secret Stash uh, in Red Bank, New Jersey, Kevin Smith's comic book store, and talked to Mike over there, and he has offered to send us a hardcover copy of Daredevil, uh, which one's that? Guardian Devil, you think? Probably. Signed by I Kevin. I assume it's something that Kevin That's the only uh, trade Daredevil I think Kevin Smith's done. Yeah. So, signed by Kevin Smith. So, that is a very cool prize. I'm still waiting for that to come in. should be in any day now. But Mike said he's going to shoot that over to me. And major thanks to the Secret Session Red Bank for that. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> Definitely. I didn't expect them to send us something so nice. You know, I didn't, they didn't have to send us anything. But... Uh, <laughs> But I guess they uh, they enjoyed. You know. I know because again, it's one of those ones. It's just I feel like they look out for the little guy. Like sure, they know because even them, everyone that works there, they have their show now. But it was a little indie comic book store and their little on their own podcasts, mm-hmm. and it's pretty much like you know us. Yeah. So and it's twenty four hours promotion. Yes, so exactly. Uh, you also gave us a uh, Conan the Barbarian hardcover book and theatrical poster yes, set. Yes, a uh, very cool great. poster, double-sided of the new Conan movie with the dude from Game of Thrones. I forget his name. Jason Momoa. Momoa. That's it. Yeah. Momoa. 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 That guy. 
So him plus a hardcover <laughs> Ultimate Guide to Conan the Barbarian. Which is really cool. I was flipping through it. I know, uh, right? It's, it's like those guides you see with the big white covers at, at uh, Barnes & Noble. You know, those those oversized books that you can flip through and see, like, all the little technical stuff. And yeah, it's basically like a giant directory of every term, person, land that has been in the Conan universe. So if you don't know anything about Conan, this is a perfect introduction. Exactly. I'll tell you everything. Everything. Uh, next up, Scott Pilgrim, book six, the yes. final book of Scott Pilgrim, which we will give away when we are done destroying Gideon, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good call. It's an apropos um, first prize Yes, it away. is only book six, however, think of it this way, the way I've been typing this out to people. The Scott Pilgrim movie was made before book six was released. So the movie, for the most part, follows along with the books. But book six was pretty much the writer Brian Lee O'Malley did his thing, and it's slightly different than the ending of the movie. So consider it like an alternate ending, if you will, in comic book form. Right. It's great. <coughs> it's, you get the comic book version and the movie version, like everything else should be. <laughs> you know, just about every time they make a comic book movie, it strays from the book, and people say, you know, there's the book version, and then there's the movie version, like Kick-Ass. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have three pairs of Phillies tickets donated from my friend uh, Jim Pennock. That uh, is awesome. He's a season ticket holder and said, you know, I'm not going to you know, lie to you. I think you should have these. I think they would go to a better cause. So, boom. Wow. Free Thank you so much. That is an amazing thing yeah, to so, potentially win. So, Jim gave us three pairs. Uh, first pair is for the August 28th Mets game, which is kind of soon after the event. But, you know, you donate, and I'll give you the tickets right away. Uh, the September 9th Rockies game and the September 25th, day before my birthday, everybody, so remember that, uh, Nationals game. So if you want to, you know, give me a birthday present, I'll go with you to the game. So it's no problem. Uh, next up, we have Batman the Brave and the Bold Season 1 Part 1 DVD set. This is It's 13 episodes of the recent show, Batman Brave and the Bold. It looks kind of kiddie, childish, and silly. But it's really funny. But that's the appeal of it. It's huh? one of those ones that was just like, I was so against this show for a while. Then I actually sat down and watched it. And when you see an episode where Batman and Plastic Man have to fight dinosaurs, it and it's the second episode of the series <laughs> without pretty much it's like they don't exp- you you know who these characters are. Plus, Diedrich Bader voices Batman, so it, and he's know. really good at it. Yeah, doesn't someone crazy voice Aquaman? Uh, who I'm was not sure? I, I'm googling. We're it gonna right Google now. it right now live. <laughs> um, yeah, Diedrich Bader actually pulls off a really good Batman, and there are a ton of other guest uh, voices in that show. But it is a very, it's a very fun show. We definitely recommend giving it a shot. Aquaman wins that show. It is so such an absurd character, dude. Why don't you just IMDb the the show? That's okay. It's not a big deal anymore. Uh, <laughs> maybe someone can let me know later. Yep. After uh, they win it and watch it. That's right. They can let me know once they hear that voice and one recognize who it is. I know it's someone probably famous. But I know Aquaman's supposed to be the best part of the show. Aquaman is the best part of the show. <laughs> Which is Aquaman. <laughs> What they do, the way they make Aquaman is pretty much he thinks of himself as, like, the best hero ever. And he names all of his adventures. It's like, I'll call this the tale of so-and-so. It's just, it's so absurd. Oh, it's the guy who voices Bender from Futurama. Oh, okay. okay. And he's also the main character from uh, Gears of War, D- John DiMaggio, voices and Aquaman. Wolf Friedel, Eric, voices Eric, Blue Beetle. <laughs> Eric from uh, Boy Meets World. He, he used to be Batman Beyond, now he's Blue Beetle. Oh, and Penguin's voiced by Stephen Root, who was, uh, uh, what's it, Milton from Office Space. <laughs> it has a great voice cast. It really does. It's very clever writing for, it's just so stupid and fun. So, if you win this, give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. Adults and kids would all love this show, trust me. Yeah, th- so we have that, and then, uh, Next Level Video Games have uh, sent us over a Halo Reach full game digital that download is card. awesome. So it's the entire game. All you have to do is scratch off the code on the back and go into your Xbox 360 and redeem the code that's on the back. And you I have... have never been a Halo fan. I have played this one, though. Uh-huh. It's my favorite one. Yeah, I beat this. Because it's the only one I'm actually able to play without losing constantly. So I, uh, I like it. I beat Halo Reach, and I really enjoyed it. There's a space battle level in the middle of Halo Reach, which is just, like, mind-blowing. Oh, it's awesome. There's a part of me that if if they make a Halo just, like, a game where it's the entire thing's just, like, space shooter like Star Fox, I would probably reserve it. <laughs> like that's, <laughs> that's how excited I would be if they made a whole game where it was just, like, that space, ba- space mission. 
Uh, next up, Batman Year One DVD and poster set. Right, theatrical poster. Well, not theatrical, but you know, pretty much store poster sure. for Batman Year One plus the DVD of the movie, animated movie based on the Frank Miller comic. Yeah. This one, not as much for kids. No. Uh, it is a little bit more adult themed. There's no like language or nudity or anything, but it's a little violent. Uh, there's some situations that could be some kind of questionable, but it's still for. For that, though, it is a really good animated movie. Mm-hmm. So, And this is the beginnings of Batman. It's so basically would, like Batman Begins in animated form. Yeah. Because the Batman Year One book was a lot like Batman Begins. They took a lot of and stuff from Batman Year One. This follows a lot more of your favorite character, John. This It's actually yep. heavily it's all Gordon. It's all Gordon. It's mostly a Gordon movie. It with is. Batman thrown in trying to learn the ropes. So yep. You see a young cop named Jim Gordon moved to Gotham, try to change things forever, and uh, meets the Batman, and they team up and try to change Gotham for the better. Yeah, so. with a special appearance from Miss Selina Kyle shows up also. And they so. became best of friends. Yes, that's what happens. <laughs> so, watch it, We're it's going to be good. Best friends that anyone could have had. <laughs> it is a really... DC's been killing it with these animated movies, and this is another one that just adds to the list. It's a great... Animated yeah, DC movie, animated movies. movies are amazing. I have never seen a bad one myself, no. so uh, you should totally check those out whenever yes. you get a chance. Uh, next, we have a Synergy art pack. So say you didn't donate $50 and you want a copy of Synergy, here you go. You have a chance to win a Synergy art pack with Synergy number one, signed by me, Yay! plus an original sketch of any character you want. Now, what size is the sketch? I don't know yet. What are you shooting thinking. for? Like 8x10 or smaller? It's either going to be uh, probably either a 8x10 or maybe a sketch card. Like I'll, a let them, back or something? I'll let them yeah. choose. If they want a sketch card, I'll give them one of those. Full size poster. Full size. <laughs> 20 by 20 yes. And you get yeah. that. And you get an art print of your choosing. Of all yes. of my art prints, you can pick whatever one you want, and you will get it. You can have whatever you like. So it's like a whole Yay. synergy art pack is what I like to call it. So mm-hmm. a whole gift pack. Of all things me. Yay. Yay. Uh... Which one? Adventureland. Yes. Also donated some Xenoscope comic soft cover stories, which I've never heard or I've never uh, read them, but yeah. I'm sure they're pretty good. Xenoscope's yes. a pretty major company. And they are they're just they're standalone, it's, it's just two fun. Sta- standalone it, books. So. Yeah. So you can just jump right in. Not, you don't have to know anything about the characters beforehand or where they're going. You can just jump in and read these fun indie books. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I heard back today from Next Level Games. I have to add this to the prize list, but it will be up by the time the actual event starts. Uh, Next Level Games, uh, the owner, Nick, his wife does these am- amazing pieces of pixel art. And, uh, They're really great. Like, on canvas, and he, like, she made this, like, cheap, cheap, like, the cheap, cheap in the fishbowl. Did you see that? That was from awesome, Mario? dude. So she's donating two pieces of pixel art for us to give away, too. So if you go on Next Level Games on Facebook, you can get a kind of a preview if you go through their pictures and see what so kind so of I am style very is. impressed by this. It is a perfect... It is a perfect piece of of nerdy home decor without being too over the top. Sure, it's perfect for like a movie room or a a, a man cave or you know not even a kids room, like anything. Sure, it goes anywhere. You know, so you can convince your significant other throw it in the living room, hallway. Yeah, I mean, she makes Christmas ornaments too, and I, I bought like three of them last Christmas because this is my first time in the store. I was like, and how much are those? <laughs> it's like, you know, it's one of those things that you see while you're paying, right? And you're like, oh, that's great. How so much are those? We don't know what she's making us right now. I told it's her a surprise. I told her to make whatever you want. I don't want to limit artistic vision. No. So whatever she makes us, it should be awesome. We will have pictures and info as soon as we get it. So it'll probably be on a canvas. So whoever wins that will get some nice pixel art. Then I. And uh, me and a couple people are going to head out this weekend to get some more prizes to add to the list. Uh, I want to get like a basket of dog stuff, like dog toys, you know, some treats, right. stuff like that. Uh, maybe some candy, like a candy basket or a box of, you know, Swedish Lots fish, something like that. Uh, you know, try, I'm trying to get like generic stuff that everybody can Right, because really some like, people don't no like what. movies or comic books or video games. Makes sense. I know, right? Those people are missing out. Uh, you know, so I, I contacted with a couple people. Sean's got some prizes coming. I haven't really talked to him, but I think he's got some stuff at his house that I have to add to the list. Uh, but yeah, this this is going to be uh, the first time. Some stuff from some baseball teams. We don't know exactly all the details yet. Um, but again, the site will be updated as soon sure. as we get it. Yeah, because I mean, in a couple of days, the event's going to happen. So if it's not on the site, you will find out live on the air. Live. But you can donate now if you go to synergycomic.com. Yes, some have already donated, and we are... We're doing we're well. Doing, we're, yeah. yeah. We're doing very well so far. Hell yeah. And that's not... The counter that you see at the top of the page on the Clash website is just for digital people who send in money, you know, online. 
But we're we actually un- getting some cash, too. Right, because we do understand some people do not like doing any money online. Right. Whether it's an inconvenience or they don't trust it. I understand completely. But so we do yeah. are we are taking cash donations up until and during the event as well. Yep, I am taking. I'm not sending the money until the end of September. So whoever wants to send me the money, they have till September 26th. That's my birthday. I figured that was a good time to cut it off. September That's 26th. the second time you've plugged your birthday. You're know, really yeah. reaching out there for something, aren't I you? I like I like birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> I like money. This podcast can be called the uh, Clash for the Canines. I like birthdays edition. <laughs> So let's get to what the West Jersey Volunteers for Animals are all about. Yes, please. So that's all the money's going to. We covered the event. We covered the prizes. So what is your money going to be going to besides getting something fun? West Jersey Volunteers for Animals is an organization who's based out of South Jersey that basically takes dogs from shelters that are overcrowded or killing, you know, killing kill shelters. Right. They they take them out of the kill shelter and find them foster homes until they find a home here. And they don't do it here. They do it f- from shelters in North Carolina because a lot of dogs are kind of mistreated, you know, down south and, you know, the Carolinas. And mm-hmm. they just take dogs and, le- and tie them outside. And then dog catchers will see them and tie them up and throw them in a shelter, and that'll be it. So right, right. what they like to do is they like to take these dogs out of these places and find them, you know, houses. I hooked up with them because – uh I have a dog. He's a Wheaton Terrier, and we adopted him. He's a, like a full pedigree. My mom picked him out and the whole thing, and I never adopted a dog before, to be honest. I never looked into it. So we got to the point where my wife wanted to get another dog, so we started looking into it, and we went on PetFinder.com, and we wanted to adopt because we thought it would be a nice thing, and we found this organization, and they had a dog named Abby that we loved, and we met, and we we adopted her. She became our dog, so... um. When we adopted our dog, we kind of learned everything there is to know about this organization, and we found out that it's all volunteers. It's all volunteer work that they fly these dogs in, they get them all their shots, they get them you know spayed or neutered, they get them whatever health problems they have, heartworms, they get taken care of before they give them homes. So not only do they find them homes, but they also treat them and take care of them and do all this amazing stuff. So I wanted to give back. So your money that you donate will help these dogs that they rip out of shelters that are going to be killed. They help them get their medication. They help them find a better life in general is what these people do. So, I mean, you can't you can't really go wrong when you donate to a comp- uh, organization that's all volunteers that pay for all this stuff. So you are helping these people find homes for these dogs. So It's a great organization, and uh, their website's on my website under the uh, Clash page. So you can find out more through them. And they also do meet and greets. If you're looking to adopt a dog, you can go to their website and they have a schedule. They do meet and greets where they bring all their dogs out to PetSmarts and Petco's and uh, all these other pet stores. And they participate in parades and kind of get these dogs out there to find better homes. And the only fee you really have to pay is the the money that it costs to get them neutered is the only fee you have to pay to adopt the dog. So... It's a great organization, and they're on Facebook, and you can see pictures of dogs that they got in, and they'll let you know if they're good with other dogs or good with kids or babies. You kind of have that heads up instead of when you get a puppy and you don't know what you're getting. You kind of get a foot up on how the dog is, and you find out their whole story. So, Very cool. Yeah. It's a great organization, and your money is going to a great cause. And you could win something cool. Exactly. And we win for everyone. Not only you get to see that, but you get to see us get murdered in video games left and right for 24 hours. Bye, Gideon Graves. Oh, Gideon, you're going down. Scott Pilgrim. Oh, man. So that's basically what the Clash for the Canines is all about. I mean, you got a brief history. You got the whole schedule. So now all you have to do is tune in. Yep. Tune so August 18th, August 18th, starting at noon, you can go to SynergyComic.com and... You know how on my site we just have like those slides that flash. The only slide that's going to be up on August 18th is the link to this this uh, charity page. So if you're going there and you're like, man, I want to hear some shenanigans. I want to see what kind of goofy things they're doing this time. And then you come across that this charity event's going on. Take a look. We're going to be saying some ridiculous things for 24 hours straight. You know, we're going to be entertaining. It's not going to be all, you know, Sarah McLaughlin music. It's going to well, be a fun time. You do not know about that three-hour Twilight Zone period. <laughs> the three-hour Twilight Zone period, you might see some hangover type stuff, though, yeah. so you might want to stay away from that. Maybe a monkey. And- I'm going to wake up with my, my kidneys in a bathtub or something like that. Mario! How dare you, Gideon! 
So tune in, August 18th. <laughs> <laughs> August 18th at noon. Look for my kidneys in a bathtub. No, just no. tune in. Tune in. Donate. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Definitely. Tell your friends. If, if you already have plans, if you're not doing anything at all, ha- does not hurt anything at all to just go check on us. Check us out on the website. Watch us be idiots and play video games. If not for five minutes, just, yeah, to, just so pop in. Out there. Give us a quick pop in. Let us know you're out there. You're watching. You're supporting. And you don't have to be there. He- you don't have to be here physically, but you can be here in spirit. It's a quick thing. Or digitally, your call. You Those can watch us. Know. You can donate if you want. But just have fun. Yes. Yes. So on that note, I think that's it for this special edition podcast. I think so. We've covered just about everything. We will see you later this week. We will see you. The Clash for the K. We will see you Saturday afternoon at noon. And stay with us. Check with us Sunday morning while you're eating your breakfast, your uh, wheat cakes. We'll uh, be eating coffee. That Aunt May made you some fresh wheat cakes. You can have some wheat cakes while you're watching us play some Mario games in the morning. Let's do it. And then root for me, of course, in the Blitz Super Bowl finale. If you get to the finale. (laughs) I guess we'll have to tune in and find out. Marino's in a brand new day. All right, everybody. Peace is out. Tune in. Adios. Later.